It's a Raspberry Pi breadboard rover. Basically, it's a breadboard on a rover. That's what it is. Why is that even good? Well, it means when you make your rover, you're not actually finished because you can never be finished. Sandbox, you can add more stuff to it. Inputs, outputs, sensors, left puts, up puts. Puts more stuff on your rover. We're gonna make one right now. All to use is a Raspberry Pi. A cobbler going over to a breadboard. Above that, we got a battery pack for the big old motors. We got a motor controller to drive those motors. Don't forget the motors got gears in them and that's why they move stuff. You need five volts for your Raspberry Pi. We're gonna be programming it maybe in another video. Right now, we're gonna build it. You gotta screw motors into the side of this thing so you want a thick piece of wood. Not this skinny thing, that won't work. But I'll just show you, this is how I got screws to go in. The cobbler is the gray thing there that brings the Raspberry Pi with the breadboard. The breadboard itself is pretty sticky. It comes with a sticker at the bottom and it just sticks onto the wood. That's pretty easy. If you type the word cobbler into Googles, you'll find these little packs. They have wires, LEDs, cobblers, and all that kind of stuff in with them. They're about five quid. Make sure you drill these in and then solder two wires onto the motor. Don't use naked motors. You gotta have a gearbox like this yellow one that has big cog work and gears and stuff to push heavy objects. So we're gonna attach a motor controller. This is the L298N, it's only about three quid on the internet, but it's brilliant because it can power really big hefty motors to 20 volts. The normal five volts output from the Raspberry Pi wouldn't be enough really to power any even medium sized motors. So this is absolutely essential to have one of these little guys. Um, so we're gonna put on some spacers there and that will just stop the bottom of the circuit board touching anything and also really properly secure it to the board. This wire was a little long, so I'm gonna just trim it off there. Um, I don't even remember where I robbed this wire from, but it was actually really thick and probably too thick to get into the socket of the motor controller. So I pulled the ends of the wire into a little Y branch and then just snipped off one of the branches to make the end of the wire stick out a bit, a little bit thinner so it would go into the socket. I was careful. Um, when you're uh, chopping off that bit of wire, um, always make sure that the little strands of wire don't fall into things like breadboards. So it's why I just cut my hands underneath it or maybe do it away from everything or over the bin is a good idea. We're going to use a parallel circuit here. So it's really important that both motors go the same direction. You don't get the wires mixed up here. Just to double check that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a battery and just touch the ends of the wires off the end of a, a 9 volt battery. And I can see there, those motors are actually going towards each other. They need to be going the same way. So I flicked around the last two wires there. Uh, I keep them in my fingers. And then I twist both positives together. And I twist both negative wires together. So now I've got my wires twisted together. I put the two, let's say, positives in the right-hand side there. The right-hand side socket. And the two negatives on the left-hand side socket. I've got my wires twisted together now. Make sure they're super squished up. Pop them into the sockets. Screw them in. There we go. Do the same on the other side. Put four wires into the motor controller there. Hook them up. And they're going to talk to the GPIO general inputs and outputs on the Raspberry Pi. Now, I've got a cobbler here, so it's really easy because the GPIOs are labeled. You can put them straight onto Raspberry Pi. You don't need the spread for it if you, you don't want it. But I find this is really easy because look, I can just whack them onto 27 and 17 on one side and 23 and 24 on the other. We're going to need to power that motor controller. I'm going to take two wires. I'm going to put one in the middle and one on the left, the first uh, socket there. Um, they're going to kind of go beside each other. Uh, and they're going to power the motor controller. We're going to actually use the Raspberry Pi itself to power that motor controller. The middle pin goes into the ground and the five volt pin goes back to the first socket. I'm going to add some little tool clips here to hold in a battery pack. Now the battery pack is what's going to be powering those big motors. The battery pack will just clip right in there 
It's pretty cool. It's handy for taking in and out. And if you follow those two wires down, you can see that the black one actually goes in the middle one. Something's already in there. Watch out. It's the other ground pin. Um, and the other one then goes in the far left pin, the battery pack plus. So that's on now. Just watch out. Sometimes that actually powers the Raspberry Pi itself. I don't know how it does that exactly, but it's pretty unstable. So best stick with an actual battery pack, a mobile phone charger for your Raspberry Pi. Just pop that in there. And that's, that's the thing built. It's ready to be programmed. And that's in another video.